right, well, if you have your Bibles tonight, turn with me uh, to the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter number one. And Mark chapter number one. We're going to begin in verse number 40. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Mark 1 and verse number 40. All right, Nate, you going to do that? You got it, son? All right, good job. Nate, he can play the drums. He can play the bass. He can run a computer. Amen. Pretty soon he'll be preaching. Amen. 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 <laughs> you know, that's what it is when you're a preacher's kid. You, you learn to do everything. Amen. Nate knows how to clean toilets. Amen. <laughs> Nate knows how to run cables underneath the church. And Nate knows how to do it all. Amen. But he's he doing a great job. Mark 1 and verse number 40. And uh, we'll begin. The Bible says this. And there came a leper to him. To who? To Jesus. Beseeching him. That means begging him. Pleading with Jesus. Uh, and kneeling down to him, saying, If thou wilt, you can make me clean. Verse 41, And Jesus, I like this, moved with compassion. Yeah. Oh, that, that describes Jesus, doesn't it? Jesus moved with compassion. He put forth his hand, and he touched him. Who did he touch? He touched the leprous man. And he touched him, and he said unto him, I will, be thou clean. And as soon as Jesus had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. Amen. With the help of the Holy Spirit tonight, I just want to preach for a moment or two upon the thought of the leper. Amen. The leper. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm going to ask you if Brother Ray would just pray over this work tonight. Yeah. Thank you, Brother. Heavenly Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you, Lord God. Thanks for leading us here tonight to yes. hear your word, to, to, to hear you just working and moving to uh, Pastor Williams tonight, Lord. I pray that you just continue to use him, to speak to him, yes. to help us clearly understand the message you have for each and every one of us as individuals tonight, Lord yes. God. And touch our hearts. Yes. Help us to know you even deeper. I pray and ask you these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Ray. And uh, Brother Ray is actually going to be speaking, is it next Wednesday? Next, next Wednesday. All right. So be looking forward to that. If you want to hear about his break into Area 51 oh. and Jesus getting a hold of him. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's next week. But tonight we're going to learn about the leper. Amen. Uh, if you've had COVID-19... You can kind of relate to the leprous man in our text. You, you really can. When you got COVID, you've got to isolate yourself. When you got COVID, you got to try to stay away from people. Right. When you got COVID, you got to notify certain people that you may have come in contact with. That way, in case uh, you know they got it, they can isolate themselves as well. COVID-19 has a lot of similarities to leprosy, but leprosy was far worse than, than COVID ever thought about being. Amen. For example, if a person gets COVID, you isolate yourself for 10 to 14 days, according to CDC guidelines. But if a person had leprosy in Bible times, they had to isolate themselves, not 10 days, not 14 days, not 21 days, but until they die of leprosy. It was a, a, a complete life. You're going out of the town, out of the camp until you die. If a person contacts COVID-19, there's a 99% chance of recovery. But if a person got leprosy, there was a 0% chance at recovery. Such was the case for the leprous man in our text. Now we don't know the background of this man. He could have been a young man with hopes of getting married and starting a family one day. He could have been a husband to his high school sweetheart, you could say. He could have been a father. He could have been a, a, a business owner or, or an employer. 
He could have been somebody's older brother or someone's best friend. But one day, this man's life was radically changed whenever he discovered a spot on his body. And I can imagine that one morning he woke up and he, maybe he saw a little spot on his elbow. And he thought, oh man, I must have scratched my elbow at work. But the next day he saw another spot. Then he thought to himself, well, it's probably a rash. I'll go down to the pharmacy, if you will. I'll get me some cream and I'll put it on there. That rash will uh, go away. But whenever the medicine, be quiet, Rick. Whenever the medicine did not work, oh, this man knew it's not a rash. This could very well be leprosy. Oh, the death sentence of his day. Oh, so then sure enough, once he receives the diagnosis, the his, that he had contacted the leprosy. That man's life was turned upside down. He thought that he had everything in his life all together. He thought that he had his whole life planned out ahead of him. But in one moment everything changed. You know sometimes life is just like that. It seems like everything is going picture perfect. You got the perfect home, the perfect family, the perfect marriage, the perfect husband, the perfect wife, the perfect job, but then suddenly events transpire and everything untang uh, comes untangled or tangled up and everything seems to be falling apart. At one moment you're young, you're strong, you're healthy, you feel invincible, but then suddenly your life is thrown into utter chaos. You find yourself asking questions such as this. What am I going to do now? What, what's going to happen to my life? How much longer do I have in this state? What did I do, God, to deserve this thing that has come upon me? Oh, you see, the leprous man in our text was feeling just like that. And we've all been in those similar shoes before. Lord, how am I going to make it without my job? Lord, how am I going to make it on this income that I got right now? How am I going to make it without my mate? How am I going to make it? My son has died. My, my daughter has died. My grandchildren have passed away. What am I going to do? What do you do when your world falls apart? What do you do? Where do you run when your heart is overwhelmed? Well, the leper, if he was here tonight, he would tell you there is only one place to go when your world is crashing down all around you. There is only one place to go when you receive the worst possible news about yourself or your family. There is only one place that you can go, and that is into the very presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, tonight we're going to look at this leprous man and I want you to know this no matter how awful things may be right now at 6 31 p.m. I want you to know that by the time we get through this word you can be healed you can be cleansed you can be delivered you can be set free if you'll just come in contact with Jesus can you say amen number one tonight the leper went to Jesus amen Oh, that leper went to Jesus. Amen. Oh, the Bible says in Mark 1, verse number 40, the first part of it says, There came a leper to him. Amen. Say to him. Yeah. To him. And there came a leper to him. Who's the him? Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. I like that. Now, we aren't told how long this man had been a leper. Maybe it was a few days, a few months, a few years. But in spite of how long he was in that condition, this man made his way to Jesus. You know, sometimes after you and I have made a fool of ourselves, oh, and we become an outcast. We try 
try and stay away from the Lord. Can you say amen? Surely God doesn't want to see me. Surely God doesn't want to hear from me. Surely God is mad at me. He's upset with me and he doesn't really care what I have to say. He doesn't care if I want to change. Oh, but I want you to know tonight, it doesn't matter how bad of a person you may have been. It doesn't matter how much of a mess you may have made. If you will come to Jesus in your leprous state, Jesus will touch you. Jesus will heal you. Jesus will forgive you and he will restore you. The leper went to Jesus and that's where you need to go. Can you say amen? The cure for your sin isn't found in good works. The cure for sin is not found in religion. Oh, but the cure for sin is found when you make contact with a man named Jesus. Can you say amen? Let him love you. Let him help you. Let him heal you. I'm talking about the leper tonight. Come on, Pastor. Preach. The leper. The leper went to Jesus in his awful state. Oh yes. He didn't run to a bottle. He didn't run to drugs. He didn't run to another man. Another woman like a lot of people nowadays do. Can you say amen? Whenever he was broken in his heart and life he went unto the Lord. The question God is asking you tonight is where are you going to run now? Now that your world has fallen apart. Now that you've discovered you've got that spirit spiritual leprosy if you will where are you going to go are you going to just isolate yourself until you die or are you going to get up from that condition where you are and say no matter what people say about me I am running to Jesus I'm going to cling to him I'm going to hold to him nobody else may want anything to do with me but I know Jesus wants everything to do with me while I was yet a sinner say amen. amen. The leper went to Jesus and that's where you need to go tonight. You need to go to Jesus. You know what my job as a pastor is? Is to tell people where to go when they're hurting. Right. Hello. Right. Go to Jesus. Can you say amen? Oh, you all know Miranda and I's story. I talked a little bit more about it on, on Sunday, but oh, I'll tell you this. Whenever uh, whenever I was going through divorce, I'll tell you, I didn't sit at home having a pity party. I'll tell you that right now. No, you know what I did? I made sure I was in that church. I made sure I was down at that altar. I made sure the saints of God were laying hands on me and anointing me with oil. I may have not had my whole act all together, but I knew where to go whenever trouble come. Can you say, hey man, oh, where are you going to go? When your world falls apart, where are you going to go? When you find out you got that uncurable disease, run to Jesus. Can you say, Amen? Amen. Run to Jesus. Number two, I want to tell you that the leper humbled himself before God. Amen. The leper humbled himself before God. Mark 1 and 40 says, And there came a leper to him, beseeching begging him and kneeling down to him and saying unto him, if you will, you can make me clean. Thank God. When the leper came to Jesus, he did so humbly. Amen. You know, the leper knew that according to the law of Moses, uh, he wasn't supposed to be there. The leper knew that according to the law of Moses, he wasn't to come anywhere near Jesus. He knew I have no right whatsoever to leave my leprous camp and go to Christ. So whenever that leprous man went unto Jesus, he bowed down before Jesus and he said, if you want to, you can make me clean. Amen. You know, that's the way all of us came to Jesus. Due to sin, we had no right to approach him. Due to sin, we had no right. We didn't merit anything to deserve God's forgiveness. But because we humbly came to Jesus, he saved us, he cleansed us, and he gave us eternal life. James 
4 and 10 says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Why don't a lot of people ever get up after they've contacted leprosy? It's because they refuse to humble themselves. I don't need God's help. I don't need that church's help. I don't need pastor's help. I don't need Brother Ray's help. I don't need Brother Charlie's help. I don't need Brother Rick's help. I, I don't need Lena's help. I, I can just do this thing all on my own. The Bible says this. God resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble. Can you say yes. amen? We need to humbly come before Christ and ask him for forgiveness. Lord, forgive me of my pride. Lord, forgive me of my selfishness. Forgive me of my stupidity. Have you ever had the sin of stupidity? Oh, praise the Lord. I've had the sin of stupidity a lot of times. You can ask Sister Miranda. She'll tell you that. Amen. Oh, Lord, I humbly come before you. Forgive me of my pride, my selfishness, my stupidity, and my sin. Can you say amen? Whenever you refuse to humble yourself, you're never going to get that grace that you need. Amen. You're going to keep battling the same old thing week after week, month after month, year after year, all because you never wanted to humble yourself. I've been pastoring now going on six years this Sunday. I can't tell you how many people I have seen struggle with the same old stuff because they refuse to humble themselves. How I many know it's hard to humble yourself? To humble yourself means you got to admit that you got you don't have all your act all together. Amen. How many of you got everything all together? Except for Sister Patty. She's the only one that does. No, <laughs> she didn't know what I was saying. <laughs> she got a mint in her mouth. I can see that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, yeah. But you see, sometimes, oh, we don't want to humble ourselves because then we got to admit that we're not perfect. Man. I told you a story about my mother-in-law. One time she was she was talking and she and uh, she said, "Well, nobody's perfect." And I looked at her. I said, "Well, I'm the closest thing to perfect." Amen. <laughs> about five minutes later, she says something else that set me off. I said, "Come on, let's go. We're getting out of here. Come on, kids. Come on, come on." And then I thought, mm, I just said I was perfect. And then I'm losing my cool. Hello. Mm -hmm. God knows how to humble you. Amen. Beware if you think you stand, lest you fall. Praise Amen. the Lord. Oh, what's the scripture said? Uh, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Amen. So if you think you're all that in a bag of chips, check yourself. Amen. <laughs> humble yourself. Humble yourself in the eyes of God. Can you say it? Amen. Oh, yes, but a lot of people, they just, they go over the same things week after week, month after month, year after year, some decade after decade, because they refuse to humble themselves and give it up to the Lord. I've been preaching to sinners before, and I've just seen them sit there. I've given altar calls, and I knew God was dealing with their heart, but yet at the same time, as soon as they were about to step out of their seat, they looked over at their neighbor, and they looked over here, and they thought, no, no, no. I better not come up for prayer. Everybody else is going to look at me like I'm an outcast. No, no, no. If that's you tonight, I want you to know, sitting there in your pride, oh, you're going to continue to battle the same old stuff. you got to get rid of that pride and get down to Jesus. That leprous man didn't care what anybody else thought about him. He didn't care about his reputation or the consequences that he could receive from leaving the camp. He had one goal one focus and one one desire and that was to reach Jesus because he knew if I can get to Jesus Jesus will give me what I have need of can you oh. say man oh yeah so don't let pride rob you of your cleansing amen, amen. well I don't need a savior well you're never going to get saved until you admit that you're lost amen you can't get rescued until you realize you need to be rescued. Amen. Amen. God 
God resists the proud. He gives grace unto the humble. Amen. Oh, yes. We've got to come before God with humility. The leper humbled himself before God, and that's what you and I need to do. Can you say that? Number three, this is the last thing tonight. I want to tell you that Jesus touched the leper. Amen. Jesus touched the leper. After the leper humbly came to Jesus, Mark 1.41 says that Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and he touched him. Amen. Jesus touched that leprous man. And he said unto him, I will be clean. Now we've got to understand something here. People weren't supposed to go around touching lepers. Amen. Amen. How many know if somebody got COVID, you don't want to go searching for them and say, hey, will you cough on me? No. You don't do that, right? At least I hope you don't do that. Amen. Right. Oh, yeah. But uh, I have seen people in the supermarket, though, like with a mask and they're just like, a chew, you know, <laughs> put back on crazy people at the Olive Drive Walmart. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah. We ain't supposed to go. People weren't supposed to go around touching lepers. So. Doing so risked infection, and it made the Jews of that day considered to be unclean. But if that was the case, how then was Jesus able to touch that leper? It's because the Son of God cannot be contaminated. All he can do is purify. That leper had not been Society didn't want to touch him. Friends and family couldn't touch him. But Jesus wasn't afraid of the leprosy. Jesus was moved with compassion. And he said, I'm going to heal you. He reached down his hand and he touched him. And that man who was at one time a leper was made whole. Why? He went to Jesus humbly and he asked Jesus for healing. That's what you got to do tonight. Can you say amen? Oh, yeah. Jesus wasn't afraid of the leprosy. Man. Jesus was moved with compassion, reached out, touched him, and he said, be clean. I want you to know tonight that God is not afraid of your spiritual leprosy. Amen. Hello. Thank, say, thank God. Come on, church. Thank God. Thank God. Oh, yeah. God isn't afraid of your spiritual leprosy. You can come to him just as you are. Amen. Confess your sins unto him. Ask him for forgiveness. He will heal your heart and he will heal your life. Amen. Amen. Do you remember the day that Jesus touched you? Amen. Remember the day he touched you? Remember the day you were lost in sin? Amen. Lost in carnality? Lost in addiction? Perversion? Fear, stress. And he just said, Jesus, with all this junk in my life, I know you can make me clean. You were just like that leper. Amen. But Jesus touched you, didn't he? Amen. And Jesus didn't say, well, before I touch you, go and clean yourself up. Amen. Jesus didn't say, well, before I, I, I touch you, go home and take a bath. Go home and get rid of this or get rid of that in your life, and then I'll touch you. No, no, no. Jesus saw you while you were yet a sinner, and he reached out and he touched you. Oh, and you didn't defile him. He cleaned you up, didn't he? Amen. He took that evil out of your heart. He took that wickedness out of your mind. He took that sin out of your heart, out of your life, out of your soul. You were bound for hell, but now you're bound for heaven. Why? Because he touched you. Can you say amen? Can you lift up your hands tonight and just give the Lord a good praise? Lord, thank you for touching me. I should be in hell. I should be in the grave. But you touched me and you made me whole. Praise God. Oh, yeah. Jesus ain't afraid of your sin. Amen. I've talked to some people before and I know they're struggling. I know they're struggling because the Holy Spirit revealed it. Amen. Holy Spirit will do that from time to time. Not, not every day, not all the time, but when, 
when it's necessary, he'll put it on your heart, especially if you're in leadership or your pastor. He'll put it on your heart that's struggling with something. Come on. I'll tell you, it's as if they're like, well, I can't tell them that. I can't tell him this. Listen, I've talked to sinners before that were afraid to tell me of their drug addiction, but I could see the needle marks on their arms. Right. Come on. I've had people refuse to tell me that they were alcoholics, but I could smell alcohol on their bread at church. Mm -hmm. Hello? Mm -hmm. I said, what were they doing at church? Oh, they were trying to get a hold of God. Right. Hello? Thank God for people at church. Maybe they got a little beer on their breath. Amen? Oh, come on. Whenever I was on Baker Street, we one time a guy come in there and I'm thinking, oh man, we all going to get high because this guy smells like weed. Amen. And it was bad. I mean, as soon as people walked in, it was like, oh yeah, there's a skunk in here somewhere. <laughs> oh yeah. But you know what? In spite of everything that man was going through, he was in the perfect place to get healed. Amen. He was in the perfect place to receive that miracle that he had need of. And no matter what you are going through tonight, God is not intimidated by it. It's not too big that the blood of Jesus cannot wash clean and make you white as snow. Isaiah 1 and 18 says this, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Praise the Lord. Can we lift up our hands tonight hallelujah. and just give the Lord a good praise? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's all stand tonight, church, and let's just lift up our hands. We, we've heard about the leper tonight. Oh, and uh, every one of us, we can relate to this story hallelujah. because hallelujah. at one time, all of us were outcast. And all of us were separated from God. We were bound, tormented, afflicted, but Jesus touched us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. The word tonight. And I want you to know that no matter what you're going through tonight, Jesus is here. And he desires to touch you. Amen. He desires to touch you. Let's just lift up our hands.
and um, Brother Wayne, and my brother, Frankie, why don't you help too? Uh, all you men, I'd like you to just, I want you to gather around Brother Rick tonight. Rick has a, um, a serious need in his, his family. God knows what it is. But uh, let's just ask God to intervene. Lead him, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just lift up Brother Rick before you. Lord, he's not carrying this burden alone. He's got a church with him that's carrying it. He's got
I was not afraid of leprosy then, and I'm not afraid of spiritual leprosy and sin now. My blood is greater than your failures. My blood is greater than your mistakes. My blood is greater than your sin. Come unto me, my child. Let me cleanse you. Let me give you that smile and that peace and that joy that you once had. Come before me. Humble yourselves. Admit you're a sinner. Oh, and let me make you do, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I just want to get one more altar call tonight. Be here you say, Jesus, just talk to me. I need God. Why don't you come? Hallelujah. Maybe you're watching online. And the Spirit of God is speaking to you even now. Just cry out to Him, dear Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for my sin, Lord. But God, I'm not going to try to hide it. I confess it to you. You already know what it is. I confess it to you. I repent today. Tonight I turn from it. I leave it behind. I want you, Jesus, and nothing else. Hallelujah. Oh, let's just worship the Lord one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We pray you. Glorify your name tonight. Hallelujah. We're not leaving like we come. We're leaving touch. Cleanse. Minds are cleansed, hearts are cleansed, bodies cleansed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all love Jesus tonight? Yeah. Amen. 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 Sister uh, Pat. I thank the Lord for being here and I thank the Lord for everything. And I thank the Lord. And it's not all about the people, it's not all about the church, it's all about Jesus. Amen. And Amen. you give all the glory and the honor and the praise. You see all these things. Yeah. And I give 